Robin Old, 17 aerial kills between World War II and Vietnam, and 10 that he probably shot down. He's like, I've shot down so many, yeah, I probably shot down 10 more. I lost count. Stay to the end of this video to hear a story where Robin Olds essentially shot down the entire Vietnamese Air Force during Vietnam. Robin Olds was basically cooler than a polar bear's pajamas. He was cooler than a gravedigger's shovel. This guy is the real maverick, and in this video, we're diving in to the Robin Olds. I'm gonna tell you things that the Air Force doesn't want you to hear. They basically disowned this guy. The top brass wouldn't want you to hear this story because they try to eradicate the truth behind Robin Olds, the deep intel, the real scoop. But really, they want fighter pilots to be like Robin Olds without saying it because they want fighter pilots to win, but they'll never admit that. So stay to the end of this video to hear little stories that you've never heard before. Check out my Patreon, it's Max Afterburn. I got some cool videos launching on there. Maybe even Robin Olds himself would approve of some of those dogfight videos. And then maxafterburner.co if you wanna just Wear a nice tri-blend shirt. Who doesn't like that? I've got the crimson red. We've actually got some salmon color on there as well, or tomato color if you want to call the red tomato. It's up to you. Check out maxafterburner.co. Let's dive in to Robin Olds. Robin Olds flew 259 combat missions between World War II and Vietnam. He flew the P-38, the P-51, and later he would fly the F-4. He's credited with destroying 17 enemy aircraft and then 11 that are unconfirmed, but that he most likely shot down. Again, he's like, I've shot down so many, I can't keep track. Why don't you just claim these kills as your own? And we'll get to that in a second. He also destroyed 11 more while strafing airfields with aircraft on it that were either parked or taking off. Literally, aircraft had their wheels on the runway, so they couldn't be deemed aerial kills, but make no mistake, Robin Olds didn't let them get away. And that's why Robin Olds is cooler than a banker's heart, because essentially he stands for what it means to be a real fighter pilot who focuses on winning and having a great mustache. Now we're going to talk about the person that he was. What is one word that would describe Robin Olds? Rebellious is that word. And we're going to talk right now about what made him rebellious. The first thing is that his dad was a pioneering fighter pilot from World War I who essentially paved the way for creative thinking for fighter pilots. Yeah, the book says you need to do things a specific way, but once you master that, then you can step up to higher levels where now maybe you're attacking from a different angle. You're attacking from high to low when maybe the, the normal doctrine was low to high. You're spicing it up because you have the skills now to step outside of the norm and be creative. And that's what Robin Olds' dad stood for. Robin Olds' dad rose to the rank of Brigadier General and so did Robin Olds. And Robin felt like being a fighter pilot and a good fighter pilot was in your DNA. He's quoted as saying, there are pilots and then there are pilots because there's things that you do and you learn as a solid excellent fighter pilot that can't be taught things that are just in your dna a sixth sense that essentially makes you incredibly dangerous and lethal towards the enemy and that's exactly what robin Olds had and one of the things he had as well was the fighter pilot athlete connection he was voted the top athlete in 1942 at west point for playing football he was also voted the top lineman and he's actually famous for a time during the army navy game or during a play he got his two front teeth knocked out while he was executing a tackle he took two plays off and then went back into the game and he finished the game looking like a kid who had thrown their teeth under the pillow waiting for the pillow fairy without blinking an eye that's how tough robin olds is he's basically cooler than that feeling when you walk out of the shower with no towel He's cooler than the toenail of a polar bear. He's cooler than the blood of a snowman. Anyway, moving on. This is a story that the Air Force won't want you to know, and it involves a trip to New York that happened while Robin Olds was at West Point. He went to New York with a bunch of friends and they went out on the town. They ended up going to a bar and Robin was quoted as being the life of the party. He may have taken a few shots of Jägermeister and he basically did a cheers and had the entire bar singing songs, singing fighter pilot songs that had the entire bar excited. And then he gave a nice goodbye to everybody and made it back to the base safely. But coming into his barracks, he was caught 
by one of his COs, his commanding officers. And so what they did is they demoted him from cadet captain to private. So they essentially said, you should not be having fun. You shouldn't be out there enjoying your life. You need to be 100% focused and only focused on being in the military, which that's a story for another video, but being diverse and having the ability to step outside of the norm is something that actually makes for solid fighter pilots, and Robin Olds is proof of that. But what they did is they essentially made him do military drill marches by himself at 5 a.m. every morning for the remainder of his years at West Point. And what this did was just create a deep disdain for authority inside of Robin, where he knew that he could get the job done and have fun at the same time. Work hard, play hard, and he saw that authority figures didn't really support that, so that's what made him eventually grow that magnificent push broom mustache as his middle finger to authority. But that middle finger wasn't just his mustache. It was also the way that he fought the enemy and ran his squadrons. And we're gonna get into how well he did that now. And the way he ran his squadrons made him cooler than an Eskimo's nipples. It made him cooler than a tax collector's heart. It made him colder than that shovel of a grave digger. Anyway, moving on. In 1944, Robin completed his time at West Point and was shipped off to pilot training. He completed pilot training on a very advanced timeline and then found himself in the European theater of World War II during that exact same year. And during that time, the US had really ramped up operations during World War II. And in Robin's first two missions, he shot down five German fighters. This is advanced for any pilot. In one year, he was promoted to major and given command of an entire squadron of P-38s. Robin is quoted as saying, if you're a fighter pilot, you have to take risks. There's no other way around it. Maverick would later come in years later and say, you don't have time to think up there if you think you're dead. But as you can see, Robin Olds had this credo. He had this motto. He had the moxie and the fortitude prior to Maverick. That's why when Top Gun 3 is made, Robin Olds needs to be in it somehow. Maybe Robin Old's great-grandson needs to be competing with Rooster. But Robin really welcomed risk. And at the time, there's a book called The Right Stuff. And in that book, they detailed that officers flying in the Army Air Corps or in the Navy had a 20% chance of death. And that didn't include wartime because wartime wasn't seen as an accidental death. But accidental deaths were up to 20% of all fighter pilots, and that's just a sign of the times. It shows that the reliability of the aircraft weren't really there, and there were just things in aviation that hadn't been discovered yet. It basically hockey-sticked up from the 40s into the 2000s, where we learned so much about aviation, specifically night aviation. And I have a video about the Foo Fighters and where the name for the band Foo Fighters came from. It actually came from World War II fighter pilots and some of the lessons that they had learned, and that video will be coming out soon. But fighter pilots like Robin Olds are actually motivated by this. We're motivated to be really good because we know the more stress we put ourselves under in practice, the less likely we are to die in combat. And that's how I thought about it as well. I wanted to be extremely good for my wingmen to make sure I brought everybody home, but I also wanted to be extremely good because I knew that for mom and dad, if I was really good, I'd come back and I'd be able to see my family. I'd be able to spend time with my family. If I was executing the mission extremely well and I had superior skills, I just had a better chance of survival. And that's exactly what Robin Olds did. That's exactly the credo and the motto that he passed on to every squadron that he touched. And that's why Robin Olds is cooler than day old pastries at Starbucks. And that's what makes him cooler than the udders of a cow during a snowstorm. Anyway, Robin flew the P-38 Lightning. At the time, it was one of the most advanced fighters. It had two massive turbo-cooled engines that could help the P-38 get up to altitude and take out German bombers or provide protection for US and allied bombers. Flying the P-38 at the time was challenging, but it was a formidable enemy for the Germans, and that's why Robin was cooler than the nipples on a jogger in winter. He was so cool that he made polar bears shiver. Anyway, Robin then moved on to fly the P-51, which he had multiple kills in as well, and the P-51 is one of the most iconic fighters ever made. It was specifically designed to compete with the German fighters at the time, even German jet fighters, it competed against and shot down. It was sent to the European 
European theater. It was flown by the Allied coalition and by Americans. But Robin really pushed the P-51 into the mainstream and really advanced training by challenging pilots to fly it at higher altitudes and to dogfight at higher altitudes. Even though it wasn't specifically made to reach those higher altitudes, there were specific tactics and techniques that could be executed that were spearheaded by Robin to make sure that pilots were trained in high altitude maneuvering and dogfighting to take down German bombers and to protect U.S. bombers. And then after returning from World War II, like he does, he found the coolest job ever. He became a member of the Thunderbirds. Well, kind of. He became the member of the first aerial demonstration team the Air Force ever had. And again, the Air Force doesn't want you to know this because they see Robin Wold as a bit of a cowboy and they're trying to avoid that while also encouraging fighter pilots to be like him when it comes to their aerial skill, the way they fight in combat, and the way that they hold themselves in a leadership position. But when he was on that team, he met someone. He met a famous starlet and ended up marrying her. And that just goes with the territory, right? Every Thunderbird marries a famous starlet. Wait, where, where's my starlet? He married Ella Raines, who was a famous pinup girl at the time, and she was on the nose art, actually, of P-51s that Robin Olds flew and some of the bombers that he protected in World War II. So for him to come back and end up marrying her just shows that Robin never gives up and everything comes full circle when you work hard. But Robin, after that, was seen as a rebel, and the top brass did not appreciate his outspokenness. So they basically shuffled him behind closed doors into administrative positions in Europe, and then eventually into the basement of the Pentagon, where he was essentially told to shut up and color. But he remained outspoken. He was adamant that fighter jets be changed from what politicians wanted. At the time, the politicians wanted airplanes like the F-105 to be the jack of all trades, to be able to do everything but here's a spoiler alert jets cannot do everything even when you look at the a10 the fact that it's built for close air support and taking out tanks makes it extremely good at just that it doesn't need to be an interceptor it doesn't need to be a supersonic aircraft and the fact that it is specifically made for a specific job makes it really good robin olds knew this even before the time of the a10 and it's rumored actually that robin olds had a hand in the development of the a10 of the f-16 and of the f-15 but he was adamant that aircraft like the F-105 be gotten rid of because he saw the disadvantage when it came to the F-105. It was a very fast jet, but it was horrible at dogfighting and its safety rating was atrocious. Pilots were dying in it. Pilots were having to eject out of it in droves. So he really pushed hard for aircraft to be integrated with a gun again because politicians said, hey, don't worry about it. There will never be a dogfight ever again after the nuclear bombs were dropped in Japan. They just said, hey, this is over. This is a thing of the past. You fighter pilots, haha, <laughs> just be quiet. Stay in the basement of the Pentagon and don't tell us what we actually need to hear. So Robin kept speaking out. He kept speaking out. And eventually someone listened and assigned him as the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing wing commander in Vietnam. So he took over all the aircraft essentially that were flying fighter missions in Vietnam and he was operating F-4s that didn't have a gun. So these F-4s were actually shooting missiles only at MiGs. And at the time, they had to fire two missiles to try to get one kill because the missiles would malfunction due to humidity, other concerns, and other reliability issues that missiles at the time were having. So what Robin Olds did was genius, and it goes back to his rebelliousness. Again, something that the Air Force will never tell you. What he ended up doing is he ended up commissioning friends from back home in metal shops, in fighter squadrons to build gun pods that could be placed on the belly of the F-4. And he had these sent over to Vietnam without the approval of the top brass. So once they heard that he had done this without their approval, they got extremely angry and they almost sent to have Robin Olds removed and court-martialed. But someone spoke up and said, actually, this thing happened where the tide of the air war is completely changing and an operation happened called Operation Bolo, where Robin Olds was able to shoot down half of the entire Vietnamese Air Force. And we're going to talk about that now. But what eventually happened was the gun pods were turned into integrated guns on the F-4 and the entire assembly line was changed just due to Robin Olds' success and his positive rebellious nature. 
So Robin Olds turned the tide of the air war in Vietnam against Vietnam and the Soviets because it was rumored that Soviet pilots were flying some of the MiGs in Vietnam. The biggest success was Operation Bolo, and this mission was a response to the heavy losses that were sustained during Operation Rolling Thunder, which was an aerial bombardment campaign during 1966, which the Vietnamese fighters had evaded U.S. escort fighters and attacked U.S. bombers flying predictable routes and had taken down multiple of these U.S. bombers. But on January 2nd, 1967, U.S. Air Force F-4 Phantom II multi-role fighter swim mission along the same flight paths that were typically used by the U.S. bombers during Rolling Thunder. This was a plot devised by Robin Olds himself. The ruse drew an attack by Vietnamese McCoy and Gurevich MiG-21 interceptors, whose pilots expected to find heavily loaded fighter bombers who couldn't maneuver with them. But instead, they were met by the far more agile F-4 piloted in the lead by none other than Robin Olds. The F-4 shot down seven or more, it's rumored, Vietnamese aircraft, and at the time, that was half of the operable aircraft in the Vietnamese Air Force. The battle rang around the world, and it prompted the Vietnamese strategists, as well as Soviet tacticians, to completely reevaluate the tactics and the deployment of the MiG-21, since now they were going up a much more formidable enemy, the F-4, with a gun, and oh, by the way, piloted by a push broom mustache wielding fighter pilot named Robin Olds. This was just one of the strategically genius operations led by Robin Olds while he was in Vietnam. He racked up 152 combat missions, but at the time, what he officially reported back to higher headquarters at the Air Force was that he had only flown 80 to 90 fighter missions because he knew that once he crossed 100, he would be sent home. So he was able to, to continue to drag his service out because all he wanted to do was fight and lead the mission with other fighter pilots being trained with his skill and mind and his aerial craftsmanship in dogfights, he wanted to continue to pass that on to the fighter pilots in Vietnam to keep them from being shot down. So he stayed for 51 weeks, which was twice as long as your average fighter pilot. He also knew that if he racked up five kills in Vietnam, he would be the first person ever to be an ace in World War II and Vietnam. So he kept his kill count as long as he could at four. And during missions, he would strategically pawn off kills to other fighter pilots and say, uh, yeah, that was uh, John's kill over there. Meanwhile, Robin Olds shot down 12 aircraft. No big deal. But this just goes to show that Robin Olds had the right stuff. The moxie that every fighter pilot should develop inside themselves. And that is to not care about where the credit goes, but to do your best to stay in the fight, to be in the game, and say that I want the ball when the game is on the line. And something that he did that was positively defiant was also to rock that mustache, which was basically the biggest soup strainer or push broom that mankind has ever seen. And when asked about his mustache, he said, I was far away from home. It was a gesture of defiance. And Robin Old said, the kids on base loved it. Every one of them who could ended up growing a mustache. So it's essentially like everyone sees someone successful and they're like, oh, black shirt. I'm gonna wear a black shirt now and I'm gonna be successful. But in Robin Olds' case, it was a beautiful Tom Selleck mustache that just spread like wildfire around the fighter pilot community. And even to this day, Mustache March is based on the fighter pilot Robin Olds and his desire to rise above politics and to tell the brass, hey, why don't you shove it? Let me do my job. I'll be out here winning the war. You stay at home where you're cozy in your bed. I'll take care of business out here. But at the end of the day, Robin Olds just couldn't hang up his boots or his mustache for that matter. But when he returned back from Vietnam, he was promoted to Brigadier General, but he served as the much loved commander of cadets at the US Air Force Academy. But during that assignment in 1971, he was actually shipped back to Vietnam to audit and to see what was going on with the air war and to pass on a strategic memo to higher headquarters to let them know exactly what was going on. And what did Robin Old say when he got there? Well, he saw that the pilots were not focusing on the basics. They weren't relying on dogfighting. Instead, they were again trying to just use missiles and not use the newly outfitted guns that had been strapped on or integrated into the F-4 since Robin Olds had been there. Robin Olds was quoted as saying these new age pilots in Vietnam couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag if they had to. So he ended up telling higher headquarters about this report and he volunteered to be demoted to colonel and to return to Vietnam and retake over the 8th Tactical Fighter Squadron. But once Robin Olds' offer was refused to turn back to doing what he 
you loved best being a fighter pilot who defied the odds. He took the cue to retire to Steamboat Springs, Colorado and ride off into the sunset. So what made Robin Old successful? Well, at the end of the day, it was his desire to stand up to authority with positive deviance. Now, positive deviance means you're gonna defy authority, but you're gonna do things that you know will create success because you've mastered the basics. And that's exactly what Robin Olds did. He took his initial flight training, his dogfight training, and then he built upon it. So he mastered the basics first and then built upon it and made it even better where he became a teacher and ended up teaching fighter pilots how to be more successful. If he would have just towed the line and done exactly what he was told, he never would have helped the US Air Force rise to the levels it did in Vietnam and in every single aerial combat fight since then. And the other thing that made him so successful was obviously his mustache. And this mustache I wear is an ode to Robin Olds. If you think that we should make a Top Gun 3 that involves Robin Olds' great-grandson, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for being here. Go ahead and check out Patreon, Max Afterburner. We've got some dogfights on there that'll make old Robin Olds proud. And then maxafterburner.co if you want some sweet threads. Again, the color tomato or the color salmon may be up there for you to grab as well. Thanks so much for being here. Check out one of these videos. I think you'll enjoy some of these stories that I'm telling. And hey, most of all, have a great day. We'll see you on one of these videos.